Boys and girls, welcome to Children's Church. Today, our memory verse comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 13. The Bible says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God. Yield yourself unto God. Today, we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 6, and we'll be beginning in, in verse 16. We'll, we'll go through this section 16 through 35 and just read a couple of verses. We'll paraphrase some things so we have some better understanding. Uh, but let me begin in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. The Bible says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And the verse 17 says, A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. In verse 16 through 19, we see the words six and seven. And that draws my attention when, when, when I hear numbers displayed like that. And we can see that these seven, it's a list of sins, provide us with a glimpse of the sinfulness of mankind, of all of us, even boys and girls. So we're going to look here at a list of things. And the Bible says, the Lord hates these things. It's a summary. It's a warning. Do you hear that? It's a warning that we need to be careful of these things that are listed here. Well, verse 16, these six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. That means it's disgusting. It's morally wrong. We see we see there that there are sins that God just not, does not tolerate. God doesn't like sin. God does not like sin. And the sins listed here are terrible in his sight. And he calls them an abomination. A proud look. A lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. A proud look, you might say, conceit is unacceptable to God. But we have no reason for bragging because God has made each of us in his image. There's nothing that we have done. God has created us. God has given us talents. God has given us gifts. All that we have is from God. And, and we are not to brag. Even a president of a country is a president of that country because God planned it. And that leaves no room for us to brag. The tongue, oh, the tongue can be, can be evil. Can you imagine what can come out of your mouth? Words that come out of your mouth that can hurt others? Playing on a, on a playground. And you say unkind words to others. It just pierces their hearts. It hurts them. Lying. A terrible thing. Boys and girls, don't lie. Never lie. If your mom and dad ask you a question, you've done something wrong, tell the truth. The truth is always right. The Bible says that Jesus is truth. The Bible is truth. Everything of God is based on truth. So you can see how awful it is to lie. Now the hands. Hands should be used uh, as a tool of mercy. We should use our hands as an instrument to help others. Not to hurt. Not to do wrong things with our hands. Here in this list. It says that hands 
are used for evil. We don't want to use our hands for evil. We want to use our hands for good. Proverbs 16, 8 says, A heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Well, the heart is either wicked or pure. Do you have a pure heart? A good heart? Or do you have a wicked heart? An evil heart? What's in your heart? Do you want to do good? Or do you want to do bad? God will judge. God judges our heart. And it says these wicked imaginations here are speaking of people who, who imagine in their minds things which cause other boys and girls, other causes them problems. And it talks about the feet, feet in the scripture, the feet of an evil man. We learned that an evil person is eagle, eager to get in all kinds of mischief. They are eager to get in all kinds of trouble. They want to run towards trouble instead of running away from temptation. We should not be drawn in to do, to do wrong. We are not to run in the direction of the wicked. We are not to run in the direction of things that are being done wrong. We are to run away from it. We are to stay away. So this can be a warning for us. Do not run to disobedience. Run away from disobedience. Always be obedient. Well, the heart is desperately wicked or it's pure. Proverbs 6, 19. It says, a false witness that speaketh lies... And he that soweth discord among brethren. Now, soweth discord said, causes trouble. Who is someone that causes trouble? Well, let me go back to false witness first. What is a false witness? Well, a false witness is someone that actually can create a rumor. They can start saying something about someone. Let me just use the name. Uh, I just pulled it out of the air. Uh, Johnny, I'll, I'll say this person's name is, is Johnny. Suppose I said, I saw Johnny fighting. D did you see Johnny? I saw Johnny cheating. Did you see Johnny? Johnny was lying. It, am I telling the truth? Well, I'm just making this up now. I was lying about Johnny. I'm creating a rumor by telling others Something that's not true about Johnny. We need to be careful. Always tell the truth. And be careful what you say about someone else. In the Sermon on the Mount. The Bible said we, we, we see uh, blessed is the peacemaker. Now the one who sows discord is the opposite of a peacemaker. Someone that the Bible says sows discord. That person is a troublemaker. Once again, suppose a group of kids get together. Now you're outside. You're on the playground. And you are having a good time. You're going down the slides. You're swinging on the swings. Everyone's having fun. But then someone... They want to play by some different rules. They say, I don't like that rule. I, I'm, I'm going to change it. Well, they're in the process of causing perhaps some trouble because they don't want to play by the rules. They want to change the rules. Trouble. So with discord, you know, we can cause trouble within our family. Disobedience can cause trouble. Lying can cause trouble. Disrespect can cause trouble. There can be trouble in families. There can be trouble with friends. There can be trouble in your Sunday school class. There can be trouble in your community. Someone that soweth trouble. The Bible 
warns us, be careful. Don't sow trouble. Don't cause trouble. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 through 21. The writer says, my son. So the writer is speaking to his, to his son here. And he says, keep thy father's commandment. And, for thy, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. So a warning for us boys and girls. Well, not necessarily a warning. It's something that we should do. It's that we should obey our parents. Obey our fathers. Obey their commandments. Obey their wishes. And forsake not the law of thy mother. And it says, bind them upon your heart. Keep them in your heart. Put them in your heart. Listen. Obey. That's what, that's what we need to do, boys and girls. We need to obey. Well, this collection, I'll say collection of sins, it's focused on how we treat others. Now, we must honor God. We need to worship God. We need to glorify God. God is concerned about how we treat others. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Once again, expand it a little bit. It says, my son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And in verse 22, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou shalt awake, it shall talk with thee. We read that God himself will write his law upon our hearts. God's laws should be in our heart. We should act out uh, uh, the working of the Lord in Jesus Christ. We are to become more like Jesus Christ. Not just on paper, but in our life, in our actions. Well, here was a list of things that we were warned against. Let me go to an area that's really positive right now. And uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. And I'm just going to pick out a few things and paraphrase here a little bit. It said that we should sing and make music in our heart to the Lord. We should give thanks to God the Father for everything. And it says submitting to one another out of reverence for God. We ought to have a joyful heart singing to the Lord. A thankful heart being grateful for God's blessing. A submissive heart putting others first. And I like this list. This list comes from Galatians 5. Verse 22 through 23. We're to have love. Joy. Peace. We ought to have patience, kindness, goodness. We ought to be faithful. We ought to show gentleness and self-control. So God gives us a warning. He says, these sins, I hate these. But then over in Galatians, we see how we ought to love, how we ought to have joy and peace. What a blessing as we read. From God's word. God's word gives us warnings. And God's word gives us a path. To live by. And it all comes from the truth. Which is in his word. Let's go ahead and pray boys and girls. Dear Jesus we do thank you. For this word. We thank you for the warnings. We thank you for the, the uplifting that we get as we look at the fruit of the Spirit.
And Father, we would pray for the boys and girls that are here today. And we touched on sinfulness today, sinfulness of mankind. But the Bible says for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. That means every one of us that we're sinners. And the Bible says that we deserve that separation from God. We deserve death as a result of sin. But what a blessing. God the Father sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to take the punishment for our sins on the cross. And the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you ever trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart? Boys and girls, go to your mom. Go to your preacher. Go to your pastor. Go to your Sunday school teacher and ask them to show you from God's word how to be saved. Jesus, we do thank you. We praise you. And we give you the glory. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.